So today we are looking at the Winship 2. I was quite lucky to be able to find one of these because they're not that easy to find anymore. But this is a Socket 7 CPU made by IDT and uh, it's actually the technology used in the latest Cyrix 3, the Via Cyrix 3. So the, the newer version of this chip is basically the Cyrix 3. But it's not a Cyrix, it's a wind chip. Uh, so that's why it is, it is interesting. So the wind chip 2 is interesting to me for two main reasons. Uh, the first is that it has 3D now built in. So not just the K62s having it, the uh, this wind chip has it built in as well. So that'll be very interesting to see what performance we can get out of it. The other interesting and very useful thing about this chip, as you might be able to see here, it runs at 3.3 volts. And not just 3.3 volts, it's a single uh, IO and uh, core voltage. So you don't need a motherboard that supports the dual voltage. So you could run this in a very old socket seven or even socket five potentially motherboard and have something that runs at 200 megahertz and has 3D now. Something that you won't get from the AMD chips, which often require, uh, for example, this one here, often requires 2.2 volts with a 3.3 volt IO. So it's unlikely that you're gonna be able to run one of these safely in an old machine. Whereas this Winship 2 basically will run in everything. You just need 66, um, front side bus and a three times multiplier. That runs surprisingly cool. It's interesting, there are a lot of different revisions of the Winship 2. There's a Winship 2, Winship 2A, Winship 2B. Some of these change like the front side bus and there's a few bits and pieces. I don't believe there's a huge difference. Uh, and most of them are clocked between, you know, 180 to 240 odd megahertz. So this one sits in the middle. Anyway, I had to spend a bit of time unbending some pins, but I've been able to get a good range of benchmarks with it. I've also added a couple of new benchmarks, um, which I will show. Uh, don't have those for the other CPUs, unfortunately, but I will start using that those benchmarks in future videos. So today is just about the Winship 2. I am going to try and compare it to the Winship 1 at some point, but today we're just focusing on this chip. So let's get started. So I've got a couple of uh, videos at the end after this, uh, one of Half-Life and one of Quake 3. Uh, Half-Life's a new benchmark that I have added, so I don't have results comparing other CPUs yet, but I will be adding more of that in future. So I've tested the wind chip using the exact same system as my previous Super Socket 7 benchmark video. That's got the VIA MVP3 chipset with 128 meg RAM, Windows 98 SE, a Voodoo 3 2000 PCI, no sound card, and an IDE hard drive. So the first benchmark is CPU Z. Now, as you can see here, things aren't looking great for the Winship 2. Uh, we're getting basically half the CPU performance of the K62 at the same megahertz. So it's very interesting. Uh, I, the, as you'll see as we go through these video, uh, various tests it does very well in and others it does not do well in. And I'm not quite sure why that's the case at this stage. So then we'll jump to the floating point performance test. And we can see here that again, the Winship 2 is not performing well at all. So the Pentium 133 is faster than the 200 megahertz Winship 2. Let's jump on to CPU Mark. Now this one, uh, the performance of the Winship 2 is definitely closer to the K6 200. Now the Winship 2 has a full 64K of L1 cache, so I'm sure that helps in this test. As we've seen before, this test is uh, lacks the uh, cache and memory throughput. But this test hasn't really reflected with games. Um, this is more probably a, a business or, or productivity test, not a games or floating point test. 
this is where things get interesting. Uh, now, I, I've run this test a couple of times on the Winship 2, and I have had more fluctuation in the, the frames per second than with the other CPUs, but uh, the Winship 2 has tested between 18 and a half and 20 frames a second, and that's beating the Cyrex PR333, the K6200, and the Pentium 233 MMX. And this chip is running slower than the 233 MMX, which was the previous sort of standout chip for this range of megahertz. It's crazy. Now, I don't think that Quake 3 is 3D now optimized, so I don't believe that's the reason for this uh, test uh, being so quick. I don't have a reason for it, but this is where a lot of the other benchmarks fall. The, K, the, the Winship 2 performs very well in a lot of games. So this is really quite a lot faster clock for clock than the Pentium 233 than Quake 3. And I'm expecting that that is partly to do with the L1 cache. Uh, potentially the MMX performance is very good. But whatever it is, this chip is doing very well here. Then we'll move on to 3D Mark 99. And again, we're beating the 233 MMX here in uh, the same test. So it's interesting. The You can see here the K6 2300 really has a, a, a big jump in performance. And I would have said that that was due to 3D now, but I'm not actually sure if that's the case here because the Winship doesn't have a, a huge performance increase over the Pentium 233, but still amazing performance here for a chip that I would not have expected to have that kind of level of performance. Again, 3D Mark 2000, a very good result for this chip. And this definitely benefits from 3D now, uh, but still at the, the clock speed, you know, if this was running at 233 megahertz, it would be, you know, probably only a small bit slower than the K6200. Uh, it's, it's very impressive. Next, we'll move on to Unreal Tournament. And this is where it falls down a bit compared to those last few benchmarks. And this is interesting because this is the one of the few benchmarks I've tested that is a bit of an outlier. Unreal Tournament, I think, really uses integer uh, performance more so than float, raw floating point performance. And I actually believe that the floating point performance of the Winship 2 is better than its integer performance. It's like the reverse of every other chip that you test, uh, other than the, the, the Pentium, which has always had a great floating point unit. So this is interesting. Um, it's still good. It's still performing as you would expect for a 200 megahertz chip and probably faster than a 200 megahertz non-MMX, for example, and probably similar to a 200 MMX chip. Uh, so again, a good result, but not beating out the other chips. The next uh, benchmark here is our MP3 encoding. Now, this one's interesting. This chip supports 3D Now. So this particular result is including 3D Now. If I disabled 3D Now, it, it's slightly worse than the K6200. But basically, it's matching up with the K6200. Now, the Pentium obviously is always a bit of a standout in this test, but this is still a very good result for the wind chip. So that's the, uh, the graphs. Uh, overall, I think the wind chip has done very well. Uh, it's, it's interesting, the CPU-Z performance was, was poor, uh, but all the game and 3D performance tests, I think, have done very well for it. But now let's have a look at a couple of videos. I've got uh, some capture of Quake and Half-Life. So now we're gonna do some Half-Life benchmarks. I'm running, as you can see here, version 1.1.1.0. I've decided to create my own benchmark using uh, a map in Zen. Uh, that always was one of the harder areas to run. So I'm after a pretty heavy benchmark. I'm running this with the Voodoo 3 2000 PCI at, at 640 by 480 using the mini uh, 3DFX GL driver. So let's start it off. A lot of benchmarks indoors sort of can run a lot faster than when you're outdoors. 
So this benchmark, as you can see, starts at 30 frames a second, but as soon as you jump outside, the frame rate really tanks. And that's what I'm trying to show here is what your worst case scenario is when playing Half-Life. Now this doesn't include sound, so if you added a sound card to the computer, the frame rate may be worse, but this is a pretty good indication of what you would expect. So you see here we can get approximately 15, uh, 14 frames a second, uh, whereas indoors it was up to 30 frames a second. So I'll upload this benchmark. Uh, you need to make sure you're running this version of Half-Life um, and you just put it into this folder here in Sierra Half-Life Valve and just type time demo MWD5 and you can run that benchmark. So this will be a new test that I'll add to my collection. Uh, I am quite interested to find out whether MMX makes a big difference because this game supposedly made use of MMX technology. So I would like to try and get a maybe a Pentium 166 and a Pentium 166 MMX and compare those and uh, see how we go. So now I want to show a Quake 3 benchmark. Now this is a, a Winship 2. Uh, I haven't tested the Winship 1 yet, but the Winship 2 uh, performance, as you'll soon see, is surprising. So, with a Pentium 233 MMX on the same motherboard and same installer Windows, I was getting about 17, 18 frames a second. Uh, so, I've, met, I've done a few benchmarks, so this run here won't be the results that I actually publish, but I do want to give you a, a, a bit of a demo. So, I've actually, for this video, I've decided to put it at uh, 1024. So normally for CPU benchmarks, I do it at 640 by 480, but I wanted to just show you what you could actually expect out of a, a Winship 2. Uh, so everything's on maximum uh, with 16-bit color because it's a Voodoo 3. Now, I have noticed in the console, even though it's trilinear, it does uh, say that it runs a bilinear. So that's just something to note. And... Uh, then we have it here. Now it's interesting that you can see here it says 3D now in the uh, the driver information. Now I don't know if that's always there. I will check that. Um, I don't actually know if Quake 3 supports 3D now, uh, but I have noticed that the performance is very good. So that would uh, explain some of the increase in performance if that's the case. So let's run the time demo one. Now this is not a particularly stressful benchmark, so not that um, useful if you wanted to compare how it would be if you're doing a big multiplayer game, but you're probably not using a wind chip to uh, play Quake 3 anyway. Uh, but uh, when I did these benchmarks the first few times, I was quite surprised by the results of a 200 megahertz wind chip. So yeah, it's um, been a very good chip this one. It's fast and reliable and does well. So as you can see, it definitely struggles a little bit, um, but myself back in the day would have been quite happy playing at this frame rate. And remember, this is a Super Socket 7 or just a Socket 7 uh, CPU. So you know, most people would have been using a Pentium 2 at least to play Quake 3. I definitely think the 3DFX Voodoo card is the right card to pick for these lower end CPUs. I do feel that the driver overhead is lower than a NVIDIA equivalent. That definitely goes away once you're, you're you know, running a Pentium 3 or something like that. But on these K6 Winship Pentium MMX kind of era chips, every, every bit counts. And uh, the 3DFX and Glide do have lower overheads. Although this game, my understanding is it's a proper OpenGL game, not a Glide game. So... I just think the overall driver overhead of the 3DFX chip is lower. All right, so let's have a look at the benchmark results. And 18.4. So yeah, it's almost clock for clock the same, if not better. In fact, actually slightly better than the Pentium MMX, which I think is crazy for a chip like this. So yeah, that's Quake 3.